I'm Daphne Lambert. I've always been interested in every aspect of food, our ancestral diets, cultural differences, the challenges facing agriculture today like soil, water and biodiversity, and in particular, the way we process the foods we eat and how this affects our health. Of special interest to me is cow's milk, along with the associated products. In recent years, there has been a movement away from consuming cow's milk and an increase in the consumption of plant-based milks. The main reasons include digestion difficulties caused by the sugar lactose, allergies from the protein casein, environmental concerns and animal welfare. In this video, I'm going to find out if there are dairy farmers that address these issues. I'm going to visit two farms that raise small, pasture-fed dairy herds and sell raw milk and see how much healthier milk produced this way is for the environment, cows and humans. I'm going to look at the added benefits of fermented dairy products. In addition, at the end of the video, there is a link to an article on plant-based milks. Many people believe that because we haven't drunk cow's milk for much of our evolution, it's not suited to our biology. Human survival has depended on our ability to adapt to the food available in our environment, be it plant or animal. Dairying has been traced back over 10,000 years and during that time, many people, but not all, have adapted in ways that enable them to consume and be nourished from dairy products. The sugar lactose in milk can cause some people a digestive problem. Lactose relies on the enzyme lactase to break it down into two separate molecules, glucose and galactose, so that it is then able to pass through the gut wall. Babies are able to produce this enzyme. However, after weaning, the continuing presence of lactase is a genetically determined trait and is known as lactase persistence. Lactase persistence is found in around 35% of the population worldwide as part of a gene culture coevolutionary process. This can be seen by the high frequencies that exist in historic dairying regions like the British Isles, Scandinavia and parts of Africa and very rarely, if at all, in China or Japan. Research suggests that lactase persistence emerged 7,500 years ago. Dairying started thousands of years before this, so, I wonder, did early dairy consuming populations find a way to reduce lactose concentrations? It appears that milk was fermented to make cheese and yoghurt, traces of which have been found on ancient pots. Most likely adopted to make milk last longer, the process would have, in addition, drastically reduced or eliminated lactose. Human genetics and ingenuity have both played a part in the successful digestion of cow's milk as a human food. In the last 20 years in the UK, we have seen an overall decline in the consumption of milk and dairy products. Raw milk, however, as opposed to pasteurised milk, is seeing a revival. The practice of pasteurising milk was not common at the beginning of the 20th century, but by the end of World War II, pasteurisation was more widely adopted. By the 1950s, it was everywhere, primarily introduced to halt the spread of disease, specifically TB. Pasteurisation was criticised by organic farmers as proof of the failure of modern farming. It treated the symptoms and not the cause, which, in their view, was the over-intensification of production in conditions of dirt and disease, coupled with a disregard for the traditional principles of good husbandry. Modern dairying methods such as indoor housing, grain feed, the distress caused by early separation of calf and mother and pasteurisation are big concerns. So, is there another way? To find out, I visited Christine Page at Smiling Tree Farm in Shropshire, who has a micro dairy producing and selling raw milk.
So I've got a small herd of Jersey cows which have chosen because they produce fantastic quality milk with high butter fats from a purely pasture fed diet. So the cows don't get any cereals or soy or any other supplementary feed. She is very pretty. I also chose Jersey cows because I wanted to select cows that carried the A2 gene. In modern dairy cows, higher production has been selected for, which had the unintended consequence of also selecting for a mutation called the A1 gene. And many people have digestive problems drinking milk carrying the A1 gene. I love the way you look after your cows. How come they're so content? I want the cows to have a really good quality life as well as, of course, produce really good quality milk. And part of that is allowing them to raise their own calves. So I run a cow-calf dairy, so when the cows calve, the calves run with their mothers and I just basically milk to take the excess milk that the calves can't drink. So when the cows are producing milk, which they produce 24 hours a day, it's important that they stay relaxed and calm and then no stress hormones feed through into the milk. Why have you decided not to pasteurise your milk? Well, for me, raw milk is just much more easily digested than pasteurised milk. So there is bacteria and enzymes, probiotic bacteria, that help the digestive process. And also the proteins and the fats in the milk are not denatured. So when it comes from cows on a natural diet, produced in a hygienic way and bottled hygienically, then it, it's just much better than pasteurised milk. Pasture fed is obviously better for the cow. Is it better for the environment? I actually think of myself as a soil farmer. That's the main thing I'm focused on. So I work with the cows to help regenerate the soil. So when cows are only fed their natural diet of pasture and we don't use fossil fuels or have to burn carbon in order to grow crops to feed them, cows can actually graze grass and help soil fertility and actually sequester carbon in the process. So absolutely for me, then pasture-fed cows is the, is the way to produce really high-quality milk and look after the environment. Christine's farming practices are restorative of soil, support biodiversity and protect our natural resources. Her dairy cows, as part of this harmonious environment, produce a super-rich and nutrient-dense milk. The dairy herd at Smiling Tree Farm is very small. To find out about running a larger dairy producing raw milk, I visited Plore Hatch, a biodynamic farm in East Sussex. Hi Tally, Plore Hatch is a biodynamic farm. Can you tell me a little bit about the principles of a biodynamic farm? A biodynamic farm contains all of the aspects of an organic farm but it goes a bit further. It tries to work in harmony with the nature of the land, the nature of the animals and of course the people. We are trying to create a self-sustaining organism where each aspect of the farm feeds into the others. So rather than bringing in inputs from far away, we're trying to provide everything we need on the farm from the farm. So we're providing the food for the cows from the farm and we are using the manure from the cows to fertilise the fields to grow more grass for the cows. Um, so it's a self-sustaining cycle. Tell me a little bit about the herd here at Plore Hatch and about the quantity of milk they produce. We have 35 milking cows. Um, the breed that we have are Merzrhein Issel, which is a Dutch breed that comes from between the three rivers, um, Merzrhein and Issel. We're producing a variable amount of milk depending on the period in the cow's lactation cycle, and it varies seasonally, and depends on the weather and the food that they're eating. But you could say that in the lowest time of year we have 250 litres of milk a day and in the peak time of year it's about 500 litres of milk. It changes seasonally and the qualities of the milk changes as well in the characteristics and flavours. How easy is it to process that quantity of raw milk and what products do you make from the milk? In terms of processing the really important thing is hygiene. Um, and uh, obviously producing raw milk, we have to be very fastidious um, about cleaning and everything. Uh, we do our own microbiological testing, but core to that is starting with really good milk in the first place, which comes from having really healthy cows supported by really good quality grass-based diet. And then they'll produce really good quality milk, which is really good for us to work with. And from that we make a range of cheeses, yogurts and cream kefir, and then of course the bottled raw whole milk which we sell in our shop. 
as a raw milk producer, you're registered with the Food Standard Agency. Can you tell me a little bit about the legislation that is involved in producing raw milk? We have to adhere to certain hygiene standards. Um, we get inspected twice a year and four times a year our milk is sampled but on top of that we have our own sampling regime and we do our own testing to ensure that the milk is safe. So there is some legislation around raw milk that um, says that we have to sell it directly to the customer, we can't sell it via a third party which is why raw milk can be quite hard to get hold of. One of the really positive things about this legislation is that we have to have a direct relationship with the customer. Um, that means they can ask questions and give us feedback and we are accountable to them. As for cheese and the other dairy products that we make, we could sell them via a third party, but most of our produce is actually sold through our farm shop. Visiting Smiling Tree and Plore Hatch shows that it is possible to raise small, healthy herds of pasture-fed cows, and the raw milk produced is nutritionally superior to pasteurised milk. There are a number of organic and biodynamic farms producing raw milk. Check out resources at the end of this video to see if there is a supply near you. Susceptible people can still have an intolerance or allergy to raw milk, but this can sometimes be overcome by the process of fermentation. Throughout the world, many peoples have transformed milk into a variety of different fermented cultures. This process partially breaks down lactose and pre-digests casein, which is the protein that can cause a problem for some people. Fermented products like yoghurt, kefir and cheeses are rich in beneficial lactic acid bacteria, which can help maintain gut health. Yoghurt and kefir are packed full of beneficial compounds and in many cases, people intolerant to milk find they can eat and benefit from these products. It is clear if we are to preserve the integrity, stability and beauty of planet Earth, our food systems need to change. The two farms I visited have systems that respect the soil, preserve biodiversity, provide the highest possible standards of animal welfare, support rural livelihoods and produce high quality food. There are many more farms like this and I urge you to support them. Your choice of food does make a difference. My belief is we must eat far less dairy and meat. And what we do choose to eat must come from growing systems and methods of processing that benefit the environment, animals and humans.